Yeah, I do appreciate it. Yes, for sure. I'm going to, since we don't have a, a whole lot of time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of, I'm going to, I'm going to write down a, a list of, of just the, the first steps, like exactly what, it, what, what you have to do, like what anyone has to do when it comes to Facebook ads. Um, and then what I have on my YouTube channel is I have a, a ton of videos on each, each specific step. So it's a learning process. Like that's why I told, you know, Rochelle, either, either you're going to really take the time to learn all this stuff, but even, even Shelly, I mean, if, even if you end up, you know, doing this part for her, it's, it's like a, I mean, it's literally a full-time job. Like it's what I do full-time. It's literally yeah. what I do full-time. So a person that's just kind of playing around with it, like you're going to, you're not going to see, you're not going to see that many results. Like you have to kind of dive in and it's not that you have to be a, a well, the reason why I'm saying full-time is for someone that's actually trying to learn it. Like I truly believe it's more of a part-time thing, mm -hmm. you know, someone that's actually trying to learn it. But that's just my opinion because of what I experience, like because of what I go through having to deal with it day to day, you know, whether it's for me or whether it's for other businesses that I run it for, it's a, it's literally a, it's, it's a lot. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover just the basics, like what you want to do first. Um, and then I can just lead you to my playlist on my YouTube channel where there's a, where, where you'll find every topic, every, every step on, on that YouTube channel. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so when it comes down to it, um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to bookmark two different pages. So for example, when we log into Facebook and we come to any page, whether it's your personal page or your business page, you'll click create up here at the top. And then you're going to come down and you're going to hit add. Okay. okay. When you click on add, that's going to bring you to this page over here. And this is the first page you're gonna bookmark. This is your three step. This is where the ad happens. This is where you start the ad. So it's, it's these three steps that you really wanna start to get familiar with. And that's campaign, ad set, and ad. So over here to the left, let me, let me close out this window. So over here to the left, campaign, ad set, and ad. These are the three steps when it comes to setting up a, a successful Facebook ad. Okay, so you're gonna want to bookmark this this page, and then when you come and then when you click when you click on these three lines up here at the top, and you go to Ads Manager, sometimes you'll and and Facebook they change their platform as far as the the look, and so your your side may look a little different than mine, but what you're looking for is Ads Manager. Okay, okay so when you click on Ads Manager that's going to bring you to this part and this is your dashboard. So this is where you're going to be able to look at everything. You'll be able to see that, you know, the, 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 the analytics, every, every number is, is going to be right here. So you'll want to bookmark this page as well. So those two pages bookmark for sure. And then what you're going to want to do first is you're going to want to, and, I'm, and I started, I started a little list here while you, while I was waiting, but step one, install Facebook pixel. That's first and foremost, without your Facebook pixel, Facebook cannot track anything. Facebook cannot run a successful ad for you. They can, but you just can't get any, you won't get any analytics back from it. Um, you won't get any proper targeting. There's a, there's a lot that will end up just being a mess if you don't install that Facebook pixel. <clears throat> so the Facebook pixel goes on each web page within your website. Okay. So when you go to a website and you start clicking around, in fact, let me give you, let's, let's look at the actual website and I'll give you a, a clear example. Give it, is it, Cum, it it's Kim, oh, Kimberlyn Collars. Kimberlyn, yeah. Kimberlyn, Kimberlyn, gotcha. Okay. So as we come to any website and here's what you want to do as well is you want to go to Google and you want to install a free plugin, which is called Facebook, Facebook pixel helper. This right here is a free plugin. If you just click on this Chrome, this Google Chrome one, so it'll bring you to the Chrome store. This right here, it's sitting up here in the top right. So as you install it, it's, it's going to just sit up here at the top and it's free. So it's this little shaded, do you see this little shaded gray box here? Uh-huh. 
That's the Facebook pixel helper. All that does is it, is it, 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 it allows me to tr not really track, but it, get, it, it allows me to see who's tracking me. So okay. it allows me to see whatever website I'm on. It could, it could be, I could be on any website, any, 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 any website. And if this thing lights up, that website is tracking me through a Facebook pixel. That's one huge way and one huge reason why Facebook has so much data. Because everyone that has a website, most likely they have their Facebook pixel installed on it, which gives Facebook all this data. Mm -hmm. So Facebook knows everything as far as where you're clicking. Because if you go to your favorite website, it doesn't matter what it is. Most likely that person has a Facebook pixel on it and Facebook's gathering that data. And so this right here, as you can see, no pixels found on Google Chrome. But if I go, so, so you're going to install it. You'll click on the blue button and you'll install it. And this right here will just let you know. And, and I'm not having you install this so you can you know, know what other people are doing. But I want you to install this so you know that your web pages are working. Uh -huh. so for example, when I come to Kimberlyn, look what happens. It lights up. Uh -huh. It lights up blue and there's a number, there's a number two. And so if I click on it now, it's going to tell me that there's a Facebook pixel tracking. And so what this Facebook pixel is doing specifically is it's tracking who lands here. Now, it's not tracking it by the name and phone number. Like it's, there's, you know, there's obviously still privacy policy. So Facebook's not saying, hey, David, landed on your page. Facebook's not giving you guys that type of data. Facebook's just, get, just, just collecting the actual data. So at the end of the day, Facebook's going to put all, this, all these people who viewed the page, they'll put them all in a bucket. And that bucket you'll be able to use for future advertising. Okay. So for example, as people land here, that's good information for you to know because if they landed here but have yet to purchase anything, you may want to run another ad to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that would be a better ad to run to them. It'd be, it'd be better to run an ad in the future to these folks versus running an ad to a completely cold market mm -hmm. because at least these folks landed here. At least they, they, they seen the dog. They've seen our logo. They know of us. They just didn't buy anything, but at least they landed here. So I want that data. I want to be able to use that to, to, to run future ads to them. And so as you go through a web page and you just start clicking on all these different things, our callers, place an order, all these other pages within a website, that pixel, you want it to be tracking. And it looks like it is. So whoever set up this website, just make sure that this is your pixel. Make sure that this is the correct, because I've seen that time and time again, where the person who set up the website maybe put their pixel versus putting yours. Oh, okay. So you always want to make sure. And the way you're going to find that out is when you come into, when you come into, and I don't mean to go all, I don't mean to keep bouncing all over the place, but it's kind of a bounce all over the place type of deal. So hopefully I'm recording it for you. So I'll send you the recording of okay. all this. So you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to take crazy, crazy notes if you don't want to, but um, it's kind of, it's kind of all over the place, but everything that I'm saying, it's all, it, it all matters and it's all, it's all in order, so to speak, but it's, it mm -hmm. sounds like I'm going all over the place, but this, this, this pixel, this pixel, you come over here to the three lines and then you come down here, you'll either see it here or you'll come down to all tools and you'll see it right here. Okay. So this pixel, when you click on the pixel, let me give you an example. <laughs> It'll show you your pixel and it's going to show you your pixel ID. So when I come over here, let me go back to that other account. And I haven't, I don't think I've installed a pixel on this because I have many different accounts within, within this account. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I set up this pixel. Okay. So I haven't really set it up, but when you click on the three lines, always make sure you're in the right, right, right account, right? Because I had to switch it. So mm -hmm. always make sure you're in the right account and then you'll see your pixel right here. You'll click on it. If it, if it's already set up, if it's not set up, then it'll ask you to set up just like you'll, you'll see the green button set up pixel. And then, so you'll just set it up, but this is the pixel ID right here. So seven Oh four, three, two, two. So when you look at yours and yours, 
says a different number, it doesn't say this one over here, 201605, then you know that's not your pixel. Okay. Then you'll reach out to the person who developed the website and say, hey, I noticed that there's a different pixel ID than, than, than what I have. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. then, and then, and then all, all they're going to ask you is if they're still managing the site or if Rochelle does that, or if you do that, all you're going to do is just simply hover over this one, copy this and send it to them. Or you're going to hover over this, copy this, and then log in to the back end of this website. If you guys are doing all this and, and you'll go into the settings and you'll be able to paste your Facebook ID code into the back end of this and that I, and then that pixel will now reflect on all your pages. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So this part's super important. And then, and then a little bit more about the pixel. Um, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll cover that when we go over custom conversions, but, but that's, that's, that's number one is you want to make sure that that, that Facebook pixel is installed. And then number two, create custom audiences. A custom audience is what I just mentioned. So for example, let me, um, let's bring this up just a tad. Okay. So now a custom audience. Okay. So you want to create, you want to create custom audiences. Okay. A custom audience is exactly what I just mentioned. People who land on specific parts of the page. So, we went over when someone lands on the home page. That's one type of audience. They were a website visitor. But what about the type of person who actually comes to a product, clicks on a product, and they actually come over here, and now they're on this page. This right here, this URL at the top, this is every page within a website has its own URL. Mm -hmm. so, so up here, now what we want to do is we want to create a custom audience. We want to create a custom audience around the people who landed on the home page, but then also every important page within the website, we want to create a custom audience around those folks as well. I want to know who exact I want to know who landed here. Because if they got this far, if they got to the place and order page, those are folks that are pretty dang interested. Mm -hmm. They may have not just they may have not pulled the trigger. They may not purchased, but hey, they got this far. So a good ad for those that got to this specific page, a good ad to run to them in the future may be, hey, I noticed you guys were on, you know, the caller styles, taking a look at all the different styles, just wanted to know why you didn't order. Well, hey, here's a 5% here's a discount coupon code. Place your next order now. Okay. That's literally an ad that a person would see in the newsfeed hours or maybe a day after they visited this page this page and and so i don't know if you've ever noticed or ever experienced when you were on a specific website and then all of a sudden an hour later or a few hours later or days later you see an ad for that company or for that product mm -hmm. has it ever happened to you have you ever been on any oh, yeah. maybe, like like <laughs> yeah like any website and all of a sudden you're on and then all of a sudden you're on Facebook or all of a sudden you're on Instagram or all of a sudden you're on some completely different website, but you see an ad from what you were visiting a few days ago. Mm -hmm. That's what, what Facebook calls retargeting. And so that website that you were on, and I'll just use Victoria's Secret for, for an example because you're, you're a woman. Victoria's Secret, all of a sudden we're visiting the website today and then we're on Facebook tomorrow and all of a sudden we see a Victoria's Secret ad. That right there is what Facebook calls retargeting. And that's because Victoria's Secret sets up custom audiences on every page within their website. They know what you've seen. So it's only smart for them to now show you an ad based on what you've seen. So if I come over here and I click on this specific product right here, the best seller, and I come to this page. Now I come to this one, but I don't purchase. It would be smart for you guys to run an ad to everyone who landed on this URL to get them to purchase. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? So now, now we're yeah. able to track everyone who's landing on the most important pages within our website. 
And that's all because we set up custom audiences. Okay? okay. So that's super important. And then once, once the custom audience, and this is for, for really for later on, but I'm going to, I'm going to just share it with you now. Um, but after actually, what was that? After, after you, dang, after you set up a custom audience. Okay. Um, and this is for kind of down the line, then you're going to set up, then you're going to set up, look, look alike audiences. And that's all inside of Facebook. So a lookalike audience is based around the custom audience. So for example, everyone who landed here, we're going to create a custom audience. And so based on, based on your budget, based on your targeting, let's say you're targeting the entire country. Let's say you're targeting everyone who has an interest in dogs. You're targeting dog, dog lovers. And then um, let's say you're targeting a specific age group and that's what you set. But Facebook has so much more data aside of that, right? So you, mm -hmm. you, you, set it, you set your parameters, but Facebook has so much more. So for example, a lookalike audience is telling Facebook, hey, I, you're telling Facebook, I created a custom audience and that's based on everyone who landed here. But what I want you to do now, Facebook, is I want you to create me a second audience based on these folks. So Facebook's going to kind of dig into their little bag of tricks, and they're going to bring up what they call a quote-unquote look-alike audience. They're going to bring a ton of data to match this custom audience. So, for example, you might be targeting dog lovers, but Facebook has millions of other people that are likely to land on this page as well. And those are folks who like dog training. But see, when you set up the ad, you only targeted dog lovers. You didn't even think about dog training, mm -hmm. right? So Facebook is just saying, hey, we got your back. Create a lookalike audience and we'll simply match these folks in your custom audience. And we'll give you a whole nother audience to target but you got to set that up. And so that right there is when it comes down to scaling. That's when it comes down to taking your product to the next level. Let's say, for example, you guys create a custom audience and you guys are doing, let's say, let's just say some big numbers. Let's say you guys start doing a hundred cells. Let's say you start doing a hundred cells a week. And, and now, now based on the pixel, based on the custom audiences, you guys are doing a hundred cells a week that's when you go set up a lookalike audience around everyone ar around everyone because now in order to take the 100 cells to 200 cells per week you're going to need to start targeting a lookalike audience you're going to start having you're going to start needing facebook to provide more data based on the data that you provided okay that makes sense does that make sense so uh -huh. so that's that's how you scale that's how you take you know 100 to 200 without even necessarily raising the budget you would most would most think that they would have to raise the budget. No, in order to go from a hundred cells to 200 cells, it's not necessarily raising the budget. It's simply expanding the actual targeting. And that expansion is going to happen through the lookalike audience. Okay. Based, that makes sense. Okay. So, so that right there is, is super important. And then step three, step three is setting up, set up, custom conversions gosh i can't even spell this morning custom conversions <laughs> okay so we're gonna we're gonna set up custom conversions and this right here is the actual the most important the most most important this is the most important Without setting up custom conversions, this should be step one. It really should be step one, but but it, it's not. You got to do, you, you got to do that pixel first. You got to create the custom audiences, and then eventually create the lookalike audiences around the custom audiences. But this custom conversions, without this, there's no cells coming in. Bottom line, no matter what, no matter no matter what, without setting up custom conversions, 
there's no, there, there are no cells coming in. And so a custom conversion is, let's say, for example, we click on this product. Actually, where do you purchase it at? Okay, add a cart. So we add to cart. This right here is a custom can actually, you know what this, this could be, this could be a custom audience. So, so now that I came over here and looked at the product, I click on add to cart. This should be a whole nother, this should be a whole nother, uh, a whole nother page, And that's why I don't, I, I don't know who set this up. Is it Wix or who set up this page? It's, it's on Squarespace. Squarespace, Squarespace. I don't know exactly how Squarespace works, but the whole, everything, it's all the same. It's all the, all the same. Here's what I don't like already about Squarespace. People land on this page, okay? They land on this page and, and what you guys labeled it, labeled it under mm -hmm. is correct. This is the URL. This is the forward slash. This lets us know everyone who lands here. But when they come and click on the add to cart, that should take me to a different page. Because... Okay. I can't categorize these people who click add to cart. I don't want to categorize those folks with these people who landed over here. Mm -hmm. Because look, if you notice, we landed here and here's the URL. KimberlyCollars.com forward slash place your order. This is the part that I'm referring to. It's really this part right here. Look what happens when I click on add to cart. Nothing. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so, so we're not going to be able to distinguish. We're not going to be able to categorize. We're not going to be able to segment. We're not going to be able to know who clicked on add to cart versus who did not And we need to know that. Okay. We need to know that because not only do I want to create a, not only do I want to create a custom audience of everyone who landed on place your order forward slash original dash micro dash prong. Not only do I want to create a custom audience around those people, but I also for sure need to create a custom audience around everyone who clicked the button. So this form should be its own page. And so, for example, up here, after a person clicks, on, clicks add to cart, it should go to a, new, a different page. And that URL could be something like add to cart. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a whole new page. I could take this URL and create a custom audience around those people. Okay. Because, because those people are hot. Those people actually clicked add to cart. Now, I'm referring to people that have not purchased. Mm -hmm. They just came here. They landed on this page. Place your order. They may have added to cart, but they, for some reason, maybe dinner was burning on the stove and they had to get off. For whatever reason, they clicked on add to cart. They just didn't fully purchase yet. That's a mm -hmm. whole different group of people. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. So, so you want custom audiences for everything that's going on on a website. That's what's super important. That's why I told Rochelle, I said, Rochelle, I really don't run ads for this because there's way more that goes into it. I know how to do all this. I could crush it for you guys. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's just way more. And if her budget isn't there, then obviously, you know, you're not going to be able to hire anyone to do this for you because yeah. there's, there's a lot more that goes into it. It's not just about placing one ad and all of a sudden we're going to get some sales. All of this stuff has to be set up before you even think of the ad. Okay. So before we even decide what the image of the ad is going to be, before we ever try to do some fancy video on your dog, Rochelle, all this back end start part, all this back end stuff needs to be done first. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this is one important part of it. So this, when I click on add a cart again, I'm just saying it should go to a different page so I can take that different page and I can create a custom audience around that different page and, and be able to run ads to them in the future. Because the thing is, is not everyone that everyone that clicks add to cart is not going to purchase. Yeah. Right. How many times have we been on websites where we added to cart, but we just didn't purchase for whatever reason? Mm -hmm. They didn't mean we weren't interested. It just means we, it was just bad timing for whatever reason. If, if, if you were a smart enough advertiser, you would have sent me another ad. And maybe, maybe this time when I see that future ad, 
there's some kind of discount, some kind of coupon code. You know, that, <clears throat> that happens a lot when selling stuff online is when you, when you're, when you're a good advertiser, you know, who added to cart and X amount of those folks are not going to purchase. So if you're a smart advertiser, send them another ad, run another ad, run an ad on Instagram, run an ad on Facebook and send them some kind of coupon. And so yeah. as, and that's why there's many different ads that goes on. I told Rochelle, I said, Rochelle, you cannot just run one ad. There's many ads that you're going to have to start running many ads, like many, many ads, one ad to everyone who landed here, one ad to everyone who landed maybe just on <clears throat> this page, another ad to everyone, everyone who actually purchased. So back to custom conversions. Here's what a custom conversion is. When I click on add to cart and I add this to the cart and then, and then I come over here to cart. Okay. So here, here's what I'm saying here. Here's, here's the page what I was looking for this right here. This is what you create the custom audience around is okay. cart. this is the page right here. So right before that person clicks on checkout, this is the custom audience. So gotcha. for, so in, in fact, let me click checkout one more time. Let me go check out. You want to take it as far as you can before that credit card is entered. So mm -hmm. let me see what this, okay, perfect. This is add to cart. This right here is add to cart. So most likely it is just, I don't know if you're going to need this back end part, but, but you want to look at, look at Squarespace, log in at Square, Squarespace and see exactly what the URL is for this exact page. I know it's this part right here. I know, I know it's this much, I know it's this much right here. I know it's at least, I know it's at least that much. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this back end part, if, if this equals, I don't know if that's part of the URL. <coughs> and so whatever it may be, this is your add to cart. I need to create a custom audience around everyone who lands here. Okay. Okay. Because X amount of people are not going to finish this checkout, mm -hmm. but they got this far. And that says a lot. This is a completely different person versus the person who just visited the webpage or the gotcha. homepage. Right. Does yeah. that make sense? Mm -hmm. and so my Facebook pixel <clears throat> Is tracking all this stuff. So hopefully this is your guys' pixel, the 201-605. Hopefully that's your guys' pixel. Um, and so all you need to do, as long as the pixel is installed, that's fine. Now we got to just create custom audiences around everything that's going on. Okay. Okay. Now the custom conversion. When a person comes over here and they purchase and they're taken to a thank you for purchasing page or a confirmation page or whatever you want to call it, after they purchased that is going to, that page is going to have a URL. That URL is what you're going to copy and create a custom conversion. Okay. So <clears throat> everyone who actually purchased, but it's the page that they landed on. Okay. So it's the confirmation page. It's a thank you for ordering page. Whatever that page looks like, that is what you set the custom conversions around. Okay. Okay. That right there is the most, most important, most important. These are the three steps. These are the most important three steps for any, 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 anyone looking to run Facebook ads. Okay. So, and again, I have, I have YouTube videos on, on each one on me walking you through each, each one. So, those, those are the top three steps. And then what you want to know also, or what you need to know is, um, is maybe a daily budget, daily budget. You'd want to start with anywhere from anywhere from, and, and everyone's a little different, but at the same time, you want to kind of look at the profit margin on one unit. So if you guys are selling these things at 30 to $30, $31, that's a good profit margin. That's a very, very good profit margin. So let's say, for example, it's taken Rochelle. Let's say it's taken whoever. Let's say it's taken you. Let's just say I'm going to just, I, I know this is probably a higher number, but let's just say it's costing you anywhere from, 
and I don't need to know your exact number, but let's just say it's costing just, just, just randomly. Let's say it's costing $10, which it for sure not, but let's just say it's costing 10 bucks to manufacture or to put together or to build one collar, mm -hmm. but we're selling it for 30. So there's a $20 profit margin within there, right? Yeah. Now, obviously we have to, we have to, um, 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 account for the Facebook ad budget, right? We have to account for the Facebook ad budget. So, so that $20 profit, maybe, maybe it's not all $20 profit because we have to account for the Facebook ad budget. So let's just bring it down to, let's just say, let's just say 15 bucks at the end of the day, let's say 10 bucks. Let's say at the end of the day, we're profiting 10 bucks per unit. If that's the case, what I would do is I would start at a daily budget of $10. Okay. Because if I'm spending 10 bucks a day and all I have to do is sell one of them to break even, that's a good start. Okay. Make sense? Uh-huh. And so a person that really wants to pour it on, maybe $20 a day. But that's really kind of all you don't need to go you don't need to go really higher than that to, to really start testing it. You can even go five bucks a day if you wanted to, but what I'm what I'm basing 10 bucks on is the profit margin. I'm thinking that there's at least 10 bucks in there. If if we if we spend 10 bucks a day and, and if we can sell at least one, if we break even, that's good. Because what's gonna happen is if we sell one, chances are we're gonna sell 10. And so if I can sell 10 a day at a ten dollar budget then you guys are really doing good. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. that daily budget, it's all around the profit margin of that product. Um, that's how you want to kind of base it on it. Cause you don't want to, you don't want to come in. And that's why a lot of times when it comes to products like yours, I'll see so many that are selling them. Not, not exactly that type of product, but just, just maybe, maybe a necklace or any type of bracelet or something like that in general where they're selling it for $10. And it's like, man, okay, you're selling it for 10 bucks. And so before you know it, your profit margin is maybe five bucks. So it's going to be hard for that person to spend 10, 15, 20 bucks a day when their profit margin on one is five bucks. So they just have to sell way more to, 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 to justify the cost. Mm -hmm. So, so just knowing the profit margin will allow you to really come up with it, with the, with the uh, comfortable daily budget. And I kind of base everything on one. If I can sell one of these things, then, the, and, and if I can break even, then that's a good number to start at. Okay. Make sense? Uh-huh. So, um, let's see, what else can I, what else can I, can I, can I show you? Um, 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 um. In here, just make sure that when you click on these three lines up here, and, and let, me, let me walk you through this, this, um, this part real quick. As you click on these three lines, there's so much going on. There's so much going on. You're not going to need to know three quarters of this stuff. Like I don't use, to tell you the truth, I don't use 99% of this stuff. Mm -hmm. The 1% is making sure, the 1% is the ads manager. That takes me to the dashboard. The 1% is the pixel, knowing that my pixel is installed on all my pages. The 1% is the custom conversions, making sure that my custom conversion is set up. Um, the other one is the audiences, making sure that my custom audiences are set up. And then really the last one is just the billing, making sure that my credit card on file is okay because what you don't want to start doing is you don't want to start running ads and then, and then Facebook, when they go and charge your card, it declines. Uh -huh. So, because it, 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 it's not good for Facebook. It's not good. It's not, it's not good for you actually, because that throws up a red flag to Facebook and, and, and they start to take away certain abilities or certain um, 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 tools from you. And, and, and you may not be able to adjust your budget the way you want. You may not be able to adjust your, your settings the way you want because your card has declined maybe the last three times. And so they're, they, they're just really, really big on that. You, you just want to make sure that that card on file, make sure that it goes through every time. 
and and also every time that Facebook goes to charge it, for example, and then also Facebook, when you come to when yeah when you come to billing, Facebook also allows you to set the billing date, and they bill you they bill you two different ways. Let me come to the payment. So as you click on billing, you come you can come over here and click on payment settings, and then what Facebook allows you to do is they allow you to, let me see if they allow it on this one. So right here, the threshold on this, on this account, because it's a brand new account, I don't use this account. I'm just showing you like a demo one, but on here by default, they have a $10 threshold set up and I can always change it. But as I'm saying, they only allow me to change it based on successful transactions. So when they go and bill my credit card and that $10 goes through, that looks good. If they go and bill that credit card and the $10 declines, that doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. So that is going to stop me from increasing the threshold. And why do I want to increase the threshold? Like I want to take this threshold up as high as possible to tell you the truth, because the threshold, all that, all that means really, and see, look, We'll continue raising your billing threshold until you reach 900. For now, for now, you might still receive bills less than 900. So in other words, they're telling me that I can't, I can't increase it right now because it's a brand new account and, and, that's, and there hasn't been that many transactions. And so the reason why I kind of, this is kind of a big deal. It's not really a big deal at all, but I just don't like being billed every $10. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I want one bill. And, and so the way I have mine set up now, because on my other account, I've been running ads every day forever. Now, now I can control the, 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 the threshold. But the way I have mine set up now is I'm billed once a month. And, I'm, and I was able to choose the date. So I'm billed at the end on the 30th or the 29th of every month. And the reason why I like that is because it allows me to run ads the entire month and it allows me to even run ads for other people the entire month and only have one bill at the end of the month versus having many bills every time I reach 10 bucks. Yeah. Because you're going to reach 10 bucks every other day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that credit card, I mean, as long as you don't care, I mean, whatever. I mean, some people don't care, but I just don't like seeing, you know, transactions on my credit card all month. Yeah. If I can control the billing, date, then that just allows me to sleep at night knowing that I have the entire month to try to pay that off, mm -hmm. to try to make some sales to pay that off, you know? So yeah, makes sense. I don't, it makes sense, right? So, mm -hmm. so that's, that's important to look at that card, the threshold, and just take it up as high as you can right now. It might be 10 bucks. If yours, if yours is a brand new account and you don't have a ton of transactions, it might be 10 bucks. But after every transaction, Try to come up in here and increase it. Okay. Because the further you set it out, like for example, I'll set my threshold to $10,000 knowing I'm not going to reach that because here's the deal. Facebook, they're going to charge, they're going to charge you, they're going to charge you on your billing date. So you're going to have a billing date. So for example, um, it, yeah, so, so mine, mine is April 6th. My billing date every month is April 6th. I don't know. Actually, on this account, it is, but on my other account, it's the end of the month. Mm -hmm. on this account, every month, April 6th, I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a charge. I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a bill from Facebook. But what I'm, what I'm also saying is that throughout the month, I'm also getting a bill every $10. Yeah. And so that's what I'm talking about. Like, I just rather have that one bill at the end of the month than having bills every $10 and having a bill on the six as well. Right. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you'll be able to change that the more transactions, the more, more, the more Facebook charges, you know, your card. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, um, and then this right here, you want to, you want to increase this as high as you can as well. You can control your total ad costs by setting an, an account spending limit. Your ads will pause when you reach the limit you set that's what I don't like. Like, even though, even though we want to be conservative, e even though we want to start small, I get it. But at the same time, 
I want to be able to control that. Like I want to be able to turn off the ad whenever I want. I want to be able to put whatever budget I want. I want to be able to manage the ad and, 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 and do whatever I want whenever I want. I don't want an ad to be really, really doing good. And then all of a sudden it shuts off in midday because it reached the limit. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking daily budget. We're not talking the $5 a day. We're talking the overall limit for the month that you set for your account. Okay. So, so you don't want to have this limit low. You don't want to have this limit at, at let's just say at, at 200 bucks. And then, and then you plan on spending 400 over the next month and it just stops mid month. Yeah. And, and it's going to stop without, without you even knowing it just pauses. But what, if, and, and so that's why I'm saying, what if we had, what if we had ads that were actually producing mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, because my limit, I set a limit, everything shut off, everything, every ad, every ad, every ad shuts off. Yeah. That's what we don't want. So I just change, I just, you know, choose the highest. I'll go, I'll go as high as I can. Facebook's only going to allow you to go so high, but I'll go as high as I can on that. Yeah. Perfect. They let me go to 5,000. So now I, now I know that I have, it's not that Facebook gave me credit. They're not giving me credit of five grand, but they're just giving me a limit and they're just allowing my run, my ads to run without any interruption before that 5,000 is hit. And I already know I'm not going to hit 5,000 on this one account. So I don't ever have to worry about these ads being turned off. Mm -hmm. Make sense. Yeah. So that right there is, is super important. And then when you come back into all tools and you look at all these in your case, you guys are selling products, physical products. So, so catalog, catalog is what you're going to want to want to start looking at as well. Is, is that's down the line. It's not right now. It's, it's, it's just down the line. It's where, it's where you can start adding all your images to a specific catalog within Facebook and then start running different ads based on that. But that's kind of down the line. You're not going to really need that right now. Now, audience insights. This is a good little tool that you guys can, can use as well. In here, Facebook gives you all the data on everything. So based on your niche, based on um, your product, Facebook can give you data based on everyone on Facebook or based on people connected to your page, to your actual business page. We'll go everyone on Facebook. So in here, I can choose United States. I can choose um, age and gender. I can choose interest. So let's go dogs. I'll choose dogs. And then um, we don't need to worry about any of that. We don't need to worry about any of that. Okay. So here, right here is information based on the keyword dogs. So 55% women, 45% men, page likes, people who like dogs, Let's go, actually, let me, let me see if that, let me see if it actually, let's go back one more time. Okay, now we're, now we're in there. Okay, so let's look at demographics one more time. Okay, so 64% women, 36% men. This right here could save you, this, this right here just saved you a ton of money and a ton of time. Based on what Facebook's telling us, people who love dogs, that have an interest in dogs, and this is all based on interest. There's many different ways that you could target a person. Interest is one of them. I could target, for example, I could target people who have an interest in dogs. I could target people who follow PetSmart. I could follow people who have a job in dogs. That ha they're, Maybe they're a dog trainer. Mm-hmm. Those are three different categories. One is an interest, one is an actual store, and one is an actual person that has a career in that field. Okay. So, so this right here is based on the interest of dogs. And so knowing that 64% are women and knowing that the majority of them are in between the ages of 25 to 34, there's my targeting there. Mm -hmm. That just saved me a ton of money on having to target everyone, on having to target every gender, both genders, 
because normally a person would come in here and say, okay, we're going to target men and women. We're going to target anyone between the age of 18 and 65. But Facebook's saying, no, it's not 18 to 65. It's 25 to 34. And it's, and it happens to be men. So I don't know why, why this one's showing 29%. This up here is showing 64% women. This is 36% women. I would just say, I would, I would target men and women in between the ages of 25 and 34. And that's a younger demographic. That's probably a, an audience that you probably weren't even thinking of, or maybe you were, I don't know. But when it, com when it comes to dog collars or dogs, just dogs in general, I should say, that age group is, is your biggest one. Okay. 25 to 34, and that's audience insights. So audience insights will give you that kind of information. Um, they'll give you even their job title. So this is something interesting as well. If we want to target people that are likely to purchase our product, Facebook is saying based on that keyword of dogs, job titles, you could target people in cells, you could target people that have administrative service type of jobs, and 27% of those folks are interested in dogs, which I would have never known. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I would have, I would have never known that. And then page likes, here's another way you can target, target people. You could target people as you go and set up the ad and you're, and now you're looking to target a specific group. You could target people who follow. I love my dog. And that's an actual Facebook business page. So now we're in here. We're looking at targeting Number one, people that just had an interest in dogs, but we could take it a, a step even further and we could target everyone who follows I Love My Dog. And there's 5.7 million people who follow this page. So if I set up the ad and I targeted I Love My Dog, I'm, chances are I'm going to get a hold of that many people and that audience are most likely to buy my product. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's really, really cool. So that's, that's audience insights. And so there's I Love My Dog, number two, women's clothing. The, the, the mint julep, or however you pronounce that. This page right here, Facebook, according to audience insights, Facebook is saying that this page is number one. That the majority of people who follow this page, the Mint Julep Boutique, there's 4 million people who follow this page. Facebook is saying that the majority of them also have an interest in dogs. So as I set up the ad, I could target the Mint Julep Boutique and most likely get some sales out of it. Okay. So most people would have just targeted the keyword dogs or dog lovers or whatever. This just allows us to take it even further and target specifics. I'm targeting a specific web, a, a specific Facebook business page at this point. Very specific. I could target Groupon. Chances are people who are following Groupon also love dogs. So this right here is super, super powerful. And this is also more data, big lots. That's another one. So people who follow big lots happen to love dogs. And then, and then you can even take it further and look at location. You may be thinking, hey, let's target the entire country. But Facebook, once you type in that keyword of dogs and its interest, Facebook's saying, hey, wait a minute. You may not want to target the entire country. You may want to just target specific states. And that's what this is telling us. So I don't really, I, I don't really, to tell you the truth, I don't, I don't really, I don't really go off of these numbers like, because I don't, I don't even, first of all, I don't even really understand these numbers, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.3. I mean, I guess if I was going to base it off of this, I would think 0 0.3. I would think targeting Denver, Colorado, but then over here, it says 0%. Selected audiences, the selected audience is equally likely to be in this group compared to Facebook users. So 
I would just target the whole country and just and just and just go from there. This right here, I don't really understand this part. But audience insights, you could play around with this part. And what I would do in here is I would just simply maybe look at the demographics and look at page likes. Okay. And and start playing around with that. Demographics, knowing knowing the 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 audience, knowing the age, um, and then knowing what pages these people follow. And, and maybe start targeting, targeting those folks. Okay. Okay. And then um, what else, what else, what else? Really, again, back to this. It's really just ads manager, pixels, um, custom conversions, audiences, and your billing. Okay. That's it. That's it when it comes to drop this drop down right here. Don't let all this other stuff confuse you. And you'll get into catalogs later. That's not the, something you got you to worry about right now. So <clears throat> back to the ads manager. We click on ads manager and that brings us back to the dashboard. This is where everything starts is, is your dashboard. Um, as I mentioned in, in, in the beginning, bookmark this page. This is your dashboard. And then as I showed you before, you can click on create and you can click on add. Or you could just come over here to the dashboard after you bookmark this page, you're going to, you're going to be right here. This is where you're going to see all the numbers and all the analytics. And then you can always just click on the green button and that brings you straight to the setup right here. And this is the other page that, that I wanted you to bookmark. So those are the two pages that you'll bookmark. Okay. And this is just where it all happens. Campaign, ad set and ad. And the campaign, here's what you're going to be doing 99% of the time. 99% of the time when you come in here, you're going to run a conversions ad. But remember, this has to be set up first. Gotcha. Step one, step two, and, and then this right here, this is going to be after, after you start making some sales. So after you start making some sales, then you'll set up a lookalike audience based around those audiences. Okay. Got it. Um, and then, and then again, step three, which should really be step one, but it's step three, custom conversions. This right here is based around that confirmation page that has to be set up first because now as I come over here and all this is the, to the, to the left, add, add set and add, the campaign is choosing the objective. Our objective is to drive sales, and that's going to be conversions or catalog sales as well. Catalog sales as well, but start with conversions. Start with conversions because you're not going to have a full blown catalog just yet. You're really just marketing one product right now, so mm -hmm. it's really just it's really just conversions. It's not catalog sales just yet. So in here, in here, conversions. And you'll, and you'll do some video views. And the reason why I told Rochelle, I said, Rochelle, do the video first. And, and, and that, that first one, you're going to run under video views. Okay. And the reason for it is because just like over here, where we can create a custom audience around everyone who lands on different pages, that's your custom audience. With a video, I can also create audiences around everyone who watches it. Okay. That's why the video was so important because we don't have a ton of traffic over here yet. So it's not, so we're not going to have a huge audience of people over here just yet. Mm -hmm. But if we run an ad on a video and we got 5,000 people to watch your cute little dog run around and we got thousands of people to view it, that is our audience. Now we create a custom audience around all those viewers and we show them ad number two. And ad number two is going to be conversions. Okay. So, so video views is really just to get, is to really just create the custom audience when you don't have a ton of traffic on the website just yet. Got it. Okay. And that's why I recommended video views first. Um, and then, and then start going to conversions. Conversions sells. Just, just make sure you remember that one. Actually, I'm recording it, but conversions equals sells. Video okay. views equals custom audiences. If I showed a video, if I showed, if I ran an ad on a video 
to a potential audience of 100,000 people, but only 10,000 actually viewed it. Those 10,000 become my custom audience. That right there is gold. Now I could take that custom audience of 10,000 people and show them ad number two. Got it. So your video views <clears throat> audience would be very broad. N yes and no. Yes and no. It's still within the same targeting. Mm -hmm. So I'm still running that video view to everyone in the country, 25 to 34. Like okay. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still making sure that the targeting is there. Uh -huh. um, um, but it's just giving me the data that I need. I mean, gotcha. the, the, the potential reach was a hundred thousand. Watch, for example, let's, let me, I'll walk you through this basic real quick. So let's say, for example, we go with video views and then we click continue. And then over here on the left ad set, we're now in the audience. So now we're going to be able to target the audience. We're going to be able to tell Facebook where we want them to place it. And then we're going to be able to tell them our budget. But as I'm saying, as I come over here, and this is what I'm talking about. It's this middle section ad set. As I come over here, let's go, let's say I go United States. Let's say I go 24, 24 to 35. And this is what I'm talking about when it comes to the video views. Let's say, let's say I go, I go and, and, and based on audience insights. And here's another thing that I do. Audience insights told us that the majority were, were, what were they men or were they women? Uh, women. Audience insights told us that the majority of people who have an interest in dogs are in between the ages of 24 and 35. They also told us, Audience Insights, that the majority of them were women. What I like to do, back to your mentioning of, of broad, you're actually right. What I would do is I would say, you know what? Audience Insight told me one thing, but I'm actually going to base all this off of the people who actually watch my video. So I can care less about any of these numbers right now whether it's men, women, whether it's 24 to 35, I don't even care. I'm going to target broad because here's what's going to happen. As I target the ent entire country, as I target pretty much every age, as I target both genders, and as I come in here and I type in dogs and I go with interest, I go with dogs and I go with interest. And then I come down here and what I normally do is all – actually, you can include – you can go ahead and include, actually, you'll go with Facebook pages and people who like your page. You'll just type in your page right there and you'll see it drop down. Make sure you see the drop down. So you'll type in, you'll type in your, 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 your page and then you'll see, you'll see the drop down. And all this is, is you're saying, hey, Facebook, show it to people who also like my page. That's what that part is. Uh -huh. And then automatic placements, that's fine. Leave it on automatic. And then down here on the budget. So here's what I'm saying. Let's say, for example, our daily budget, as I mentioned, was $10 a day. Now, I can let it run $10 a day. And if you're going to be managing this and looking at it all the time, then leave it and run my ad set continuously starting today. That setting is for someone like me who is in the dashboard all damn day. Mm -hmm. But if you're not and you got other things going on, and you're all over the place raising a family, trying to build a business, working your job, whatever, and you got a lot of things going on, one thing you may want to do is set a start and end date. And when I go and set a start and end date, I'll always, right now it's 8.30, it's, it's the 19th. What I always end up doing when I do set the calendar is I'll set the ad to run the following day at 6 a.m. Okay. And the only reason for it is because I want to give Facebook plenty of time to approve the ad. Oh, okay. Okay. And so let's, so, so that's for someone who's not necessarily micromanaging it and looking at it all darn day. That's setting the calendar. Now, based on this budget, based on, based on the targeting, Based on the gender, based on the, based on the age, based on the, 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 the location of where we're targeting, Facebook is saying that we have a potential reach 
of 100 million people, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, we're not going to reach all of them at all, at all at all, because let's say, for example, we only run the ad for seven days. Even if we, only, even if we ran the ad for 30 days, we're still not going to reach them all because this is what, this is what they're also telling us, is that the, the, the daily reach, the daily result is 1.8 to 5,000. So if there's 100 million and, and there's, a, there's a potential daily reach of 5,000 a day, let's say I do reach 5,000 a day. Let's say I do go 30 days. What is that, 130,000 a month? So even at full throttle, based on this daily budget of 10 bucks a day, there's no way I'm going to reach 100 million, right? Mm -hmm. I'd have to have that ad running forever. But here's what I'm saying. The reason why broad is what you do first. Is because and, and 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 the reason why I don't even base everything off of audience insights is because I want my own data. So, for example, that's why the video is so important. Because as I run that video, let's say this is going to be the video. There's a potential reach of a hundred million. There's a potential reach daily of five thousand. But based on my video, based on how long I'm going to run it for, which is only a week. Let's say only 5,000 total saw that video because, because of the time that I ran it. I only ran it for a week. Mm -hmm. So let's say this is telling me 1.8. Okay, let's say worst case scenario, it was 1.8 a, a day. So if I ran it for a week, 1.8 a day times seven, let's just say, let's just say it was, let's just let's call it two. Let's say it was 14,000 people. So in, in that entire week, 14,000 people saw that video. That's my audience. Mm -hmm. Whether that was a 24 to 35, whether that was a men, women, whether that was Orlando, Florida, or Nebraska, it doesn't matter. I'm basing everything off of now the viewers of my video. And that's yeah. a powerful, that's a powerful audience. These are people, these are, these are, these are 14,000 people that actually saw my video. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I don't care what age they are. I don't care what gender they are. They saw my video and, and chances are there was an interest there. Cause there's no way. And, and the way video views works, <coughs> excuse me, Facebook, let's say, and that's why when you guys, when you guys sent me that first one of 10 seconds, I said, Rochelle, what is this? I said, 10 seconds. No, we need, we need longer. We need a minute because the way video video ads work is let's say, for example, it was a minute and the longer, the better, because here's how, how the Facebook video ad works. Facebook, just like on the web page, we're going to create audiences around everyone who lands on different pages with a video. Facebook allows us to create audiences based on the amount of seconds that people watch it. So if you had a two minute video, Facebook's going to allow you to create a custom audience around everyone who watched half of it. They're going to also allow you to create a custom audience around everyone who watched the whole, the whole darn thing. They're going to also allow you to create a custom audience around everyone who watched 10% of it. So now we can create, we could take this two minute video, three minute video, four minute video and create custom audiences around people who watched different amount amounts of the video, different, mm -hmm. different, different, you know, seconds. And that's how you create your custom audiences around, around viewers around around viewers and that's why video ad i always tell everyone video is so important because you could track everyone who's actually watching it and and those are the those are the best people to keep getting in front of if if you if you had a two minute video and and and, and you were able to track everyone who watched half of it for someone to sit here and watch 60 seconds of your dog running around they must really love dogs because there's no yeah. way in heck that i'm gonna sit here and watch let's just say a squirrel, all those squirrels are cute, but at the same time, there's no way I'm going to sit here for 60 seconds and watch a squirrel run up and down the forest. <laughs> Unless I had an interest, a high interest in squirrels. Uh -huh. Right. And same with you, whether let's say you hate cats, there's no way you're going to watch 60 seconds of a cat video when you hate cats. So if I could track a group of people who, who sat there and watched half of my video and it was a three minute video 
that's a good audience to keep, to keep getting in front of. Yeah. Make sense. Yeah, that does. So that's why the video is so important and, and having it longer is so important. So we can build that audience. Facebook needs to know who your audience is. Facebook is saying, okay, based on what you're plugging in, yes, there's an audience, but, but an audience who actually likes your stuff. We don't know that yet. And so that's yeah. why a video is the most powerful because you'll, you're going to be able to know that after a few days, you're going to know that whoever watched the darn thing, those are likely to buy. Mm -hmm. And that's where you start. You start with the video, you start with the video and then you just come down here, set all the parameters. Um, make sure that your, your business page is right there. Automatic placements. You can leave that. I would go with $10 a day um, and maybe set the calendar, maybe run it for seven days. And again, this whole, let, let me also say this part, this first video, it's not for sales. So that's why you have to be willing to have some kind of budget because mm -hmm. not every dollar that is going into a Facebook ad is necessarily to make a sell happen. At least not right now. It is in the long run, but not right now. So for example, with video ad number one, with Facebook ad number one, a person has to be willing to spend to even find that audience. Right here, I'm telling you, okay, run the video, $10 a day. Let's say you ran that for five days. Uh, and, 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 and the whole, the whole purpose was to just, <coughs> was to just find the audience. There was a potential reach. We ran the video, 5,000 people watched it. I have to be willing to spend 50 bucks to find that audience. Mm -hmm. And not everyone is. Everyone wants to come in right away with one single ad to make a sell today. Do you see how that kind of doesn't happen that way? Yeah. Yeah. You're like we, paying for that audience. We have to like... find the audience first. Facebook knows the targeting, but to who, but, but, but for those who actually like your stuff, that's a different audience. We don't know that yet. Right. We like yeah. your specific stuff. We don't know that yet. Like some people are going to love your dog. Some people are not going to love your dog, Rochelle, you know? So let's spend a few bucks up front to find those folks who love your dog that have this interest and let's, let's find that audience because once we find that audience and once we create a custom audience around all those who watched it, then when we start running ad number two, which is conversions, our sales can start coming in, coming in, coming in even more because now we're showing that ad number two to a warm market. That's what yeah. Facebook rewards us on. Facebook rewards us when we can run ads to people who know of you. And right now, no one knows of you. Mm -hmm. And, and, and they're going to, they're, they're going to know of you once we show them a video. Okay. Make sense. Yeah. So, so that's, that's the ad set. That's step number two. And then as you come in here to the, to the, to the blue button, this is the third and final step. And so as you come in here, this is where you're going to make sure that your business page is connected. You're going to make sure that your Instagram account is connected and it'll say it right here under identity. Your business page will be up here. Your Instagram account will be down here. Um, and then back down here, what I always do first is I'll always come to the business page and place the ad here first. Okay. So, so this happens before you go and set up the ad before you clicked on the green button. Uh huh. We put the ad here first, the video, the image, the text. Okay. We, the whole, the whole, like the post, the whole post. Okay. The post is the actual ad. Okay. Okay. So you post it here first on the business page. And then by the, by the time you get to this third and final step, you're going to click on use existing post. Oh, okay. And then what Facebook's going to allow you to do is they're going to allow you to select, you hit this plus sign right here, or actually you just hit, hit select post and it's going to allow you to pull that post. Okay. And all you're going to do is click on it, find it, make sure it's the correct one. Um, and you can just see um, timeline photos, how to reduce your tax bill. So you'll see the title of it right there and you just click on it, click on the blue button, continue. 
and that ad will populate over here to the right. Okay. And then down below, you'll see, um, let me choose a different business page. Let's see if I can go with this one. Okay, so normally you would see, actually, what category did I, did I go under? I went under, did I choose video views? Let's see if I went with video views. Because there's a few more things that we see right below that didn't populate just yet. What did we go with? We went with video views. Okay, so once I put a video in right here, so use existing post, I select post, I select the video that's on my, on my page, and then down here, I don't know why it's not populating right now, but you, you'll always see it. Down here, it'll, have, it'll say call to action. And you click on the call to action, and that's where you put the link to any. What I would do is I would just put the link to maybe, maybe the product. So, for example, this right here is not what you're going to be running ads to. You're not going to be running ads to this homepage. What you're going to do is you're going to run ads to the actual product. So you're going to click around, click around, click around till you get to the actual product. <clears throat> Let me see here. So for example, this right here, this page, this page right here, you get this link, this entire link, you copy that. And then right here, it would say, call to action right below enter post ID. You'll see call to action and that's where you'll paste that link. Okay. And then you'll have a learn more button. You'll always go with the learn more button, learn more, or maybe buy now, but learn more is, is less, less. I think the word is intrusive. Is that the, the right uh -huh. word? It's less yeah. like <clears throat> it's more, it's, it's, it's not as aggressive. It's just learn more. It's not like buy now. It's not like right in your face, you know, buy now. It's, it's yeah. not that type of ad. It's more of a, of a, of a non-aggressive type of call to action. And that's learn more. So a lot of times you'll go and learn more, but again, you guys are selling physical products. So just hit the drop down, and Facebook will give you a few different, like over here, let me show you an example. This is the call to action button. So as you're in your newsfeed and you're just looking at any ad, you're scrolling through and you see a sponsored ad. Mm -hmm. There's the text, there's the image, there's the call to action button. So this learn more, it comes in many different forms and shapes and sizes. It comes in download now. It comes in sign up now. It comes in buy now. So there's a many, many different call to actions you can choose from. So just choose the right one, whether it's buy now or whether it's learn more. But that button will be connected to this link, whatever product you guys are promoting. Gotcha. Okay, so don't send someone to the homepage. Send them mm -hmm. straight to that product. Okay. Especially if that's the product that the dog was wearing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Send them straight. Yeah. Right when they click, they, they see that ad right away. There's the video. There's the dog running around. Learn more. Take them straight to the product. Okay. Right? So <clears throat> that right there is, um, and then once you, click on, once you click on learn more and you type and you paste in that link directly to the product, you're going to just come down here and make sure that your Facebook pixel is on. So this mm -hmm. shouldn't be shaded gray. It should be blue. Make sure that this Facebook pixel is on. You hit confirm. And then you'll see that ad, it'll be, it'll go into a review status. Mm -hmm. So Facebook will have it in review, in review for, for, it could be a few minutes. It could be a few hours. I've seen Facebook take a day or two to, to approve an ad, <clears throat> especially, <Okay>. if, <clears throat> excuse me, especially if it's a new account, especially if, if there are new ads, Facebook could take a day or two. And that's the whole reason why when I go with the calendar, I choose 6 a.m., the following day because I okay. want to give Facebook plenty of time to approve the ad before my ad goes live mm -hmm. versus okay. trying to set it live right now. And Facebook still needs time to approve it. Yeah. You know, okay. so, so that right there, Shelly is the most important that right there was a total crash course. And now it just comes down to testing videos and testing images. And, mm -hmm. and, and what I would do also, if it, if it's not, as easy for, for, for Rochelle to keep getting a ton of videos, have her take a ton of pictures. 
Mm-hmm. Have her just have her just take a ton of, ton of pictures of her dog and with that with that product on, and those would make great ads. Okay. So it doesn't have to be video, but what I'm saying in the beginning, it should be a video. It should be a longer video, the very first ad. Only for the fact that we need to, we need to, we need to, we need to, we need to find the audience. We yeah. Need to find the audience. We need to create that custom audience. We need to find that audience. And so it's best to do it with a video for ad number one. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So this video will be up on my YouTube channel. Refer back to it anytime you want. Message me anytime you want. Anytime you need me, email me, whatever. And and if you you know, if we need to jump on another call, we'll jump on another call. Okay. I really, really appreciate your time. You're so, so welcome, Shelly. Stay safe and God bless you guys out there. All right. You too. Thanks, Shelly. Talk to you soon. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.